When you got started programming in Java and began working with data structures, you probably first learned about arrays. And then a little bit later on, you probably also learned about array lists. But it's super easy to get them confused. When are you supposed to use one versus the other? What are the differences in how you create it, add things to it, remove things from it? We're going to talk all about all of that in this video. And then I'll tell you exactly which one I use and recommend that you use the vast majority of the time and why. Hi, I'm John. And if this is your first time watching this channel, I put up a brand new Java lesson video every single week. It could be a lesson on a Java concept or a full coding tutorial where I program something beginning to end. So please be sure to like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the video every week. And a sincere thanks to those of you who do take the time to like and subscribe. It's the only way this channel grows, so I really do appreciate it. As always, the full source with all the examples for this video is available in a link down in the description, so go and get it. So let's get right into it. Arrays and array lists. So when would you use any of these at all? Well, typically an array or an array list, either one, are used when you have just a group, a collection of the same types of objects, and you just want to hold a bunch of them. You can have an array of just numbers, maybe a list of cards in a deck, or even, look, an array of string arguments to pass to your main method. And if you've wondered what that's all about, that string array args and the main method declaration and every single Java program you've made ever, be sure to check out this video I made all about that main method. It describes exactly what that string array is used for and how you can use it in your own programs. But anyway, let's say for your purposes, you want to create uh, an array of strings. Right? Let's say you just have a, you know, a list of your friends. So you want to create an array that holds all of your friends' names, right? So here's how you would do that if you wanted to use an array. You would say string and then open close bracket. That indicates that this is an array of strings. So that's just Java's type declaration. And then after that, of course, you want to have uh, your very variable name, just like you do for any variable. So here, let's, since we're going to create an array of friends names, let's just call it a uh, friends array. And then you say equals, and we need to initialize this array. Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. The first way is just that you can say new string array, but you have to also give it uh, the capacity. So notice that right now Eclipse is giving us an error that says variable must provide either dimension expressions or an array initializer. Well, basically what it is saying is you need to give this a size. Arrays in Java have a fixed size, which means that after you've declared your array, it can't grow or shrink. It has to stay that exact size. So here we have to start out and declare its size. So let's just say it, we give it size four. So this array can hold four elements inside of it. And since that size is fixed for arrays, that array will never ever grow or shrink from four. It'll always have exactly four elements. Some of those elements might be null, and actually, um, when a string array starts out like this, all four elements will be null until we set them, but it'll never contain fewer or more than exactly four elements. You can also initialize the values in your array right away when you declare, meaning you can fill up your entire array with values within your declaration. So to do that, you just do string array, same thing, friends array, uh, since so we need a different name here, so we'll just call it friends array two, and then say equals, and then in curly brackets, curly braces, you just put in all of the values you want to have in your array uh, separated by commas. So we've got strings here. So let's just say we've got John, yours truly. I think I could be my own friend. Um, Chris, Eric, and Luke. So notice that when we did it this way, we didn't have to specify a capacity. That's because we have an implied capacity by the values that we set. So since we're setting exactly four values, the capacity of this array will be exactly four. And again, because arrays can't grow or shrink, it'll always have exactly four values. Okay, so that's how you declare and initialize an array. So how do you do it with an array list? So to make your array list, you'll say array list. Then in angle brackets, you'll put in the data type that you want to hold in this array list. So of course here, we want it to be of strings. So we say string, and then we put in your variable name, just like we did above. And we'll call this one friends array list. And then we say equals, and now we need to instantiate this array list. So uh, to do that, we do it like we do a lot of objects. We say new array list. And then we do something a little weird here. We have um, what's called a diamond operator. It's just uh, the full set of open and close angle brackets, and then an open and close parentheses, and then a semicolon. So this open and close angle brackets is often called a diamond operator. In older versions of Java, you had to specify the data type you wanted to hold in your array all over again here in this part. Then in later versions of Java, they said, hey, that's kind of silly. You're already specifying it here. Java can just infer that you still mean that this is uh, an array list of strings. And so now you can just use this 
uh, which is called a diamond operator. So now we do have to add our imports for ArrayList. So I'm using um, Eclipse, so I can just say Control Shift O and organize my import. But if you're not using any special IDE, this is the import you will need, java.util.arraylist. So notice I didn't have to specify a size like I did for the arrays. But here in the ArrayList, I didn't have to specify a size. And the reason for that is ArrayLists do not have a fixed size. That is one of the big benefits of ArrayLists over arrays. Arrays always have a fixed size that you cannot change, but array lists will uh, dynamically either expand or contract their size automatically by however many elements you are adding or removing from it. So it's pretty handy that way. So it can make programming with them a lot easier. And you can, just like we uh, filled up the array with a, an explicit list of values here, we can also do something similar with array lists. What we do is array list uh, string. This part's all the same. Um, we give it a name, friends array list two equals new array list open and close angle brackets. And then in the parentheses here, you'll type in arrays dot as list and then you'll pass into this arrays as list method just a, a comma separated uh, list of the values you want to have in your array list but no curly braces here just the values uh, separated by commas john chris eric luke Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and move some of this down to a new line so you can see all of it. Okay, so instead of just saying new array list, which uh, doesn't fill up any values at all, you could say new array list, then you pass in arrays.as list, and then uh, explicitly uh, the list of all the values you want to have in there. There are some other ways you can do it, such as only having this arrays.as list part, but that actually gives you what's called an immutable list. It gives you a list that you can't change, so you couldn't ever add, remove, or change any values inside of it. Uh, doing it this way with the new array list and then passing in the arrays.as list call gives you a list that is mutable, that you can uh, mess around with and do whatever you want with. So that's what we want for this purpose here. So this is the first set of differences, right, between the arrays and the array lists. Uh, just declaring them and initializing them is different. And also we know now that arrays have a fixed size while an array list has a completely dynamic sizing. And another difference between arrays and array list before we move on is what kind of data they can actually hold. Now an array can hold uh, basically anything. It can hold a primitive data type like an int, a long, a boolean, and it can also hold objects like string or whatever cat or dog kind of object uh, that you make in your own programs. However, an array list can only hold objects. It cannot hold primitives. So if you try to make it an array list of ints, you're going to get an error. So that's one very small limitation of array lists, but you can get around it pretty easily by just using the wrapper class of whatever uh, primitive data type you want to put in your array list. So here, instead of int, you can just put in integer and it'll work exactly the same way. So really not much of a downside, just something you should know. If you want to use an array list with a primitive data type like int, just use its associated wrapper class. So just integer for ints, capital L for long, capital B for Boolean, that kind of thing. Okay, let's change this back to a string. Now that we've gone over the differences in the instantiations, let's go ahead and just clean up our code a little bit so that we can have um, an array and array list that have some values that we can mess around with. So next, how do we get values from an array versus getting a value from an array list? To get a value from an array, you just have to specify the index of the value that you want. Indexes for arrays and array lists both work the same. They both start at zero, which means they look something like uh, this. So the first element will have index zero, the second element will have index one, and so on. Since we have four elements in both our array and our array list examples, uh, the indexes will look like this, 0, 1, 2, and 3 for the last element uh, in each one. So let's say we wanted to get the second element in each of these. So how do we get the second element from our friends array? All I have to do is say friends array, and then in uh, brackets, you specify the index that you want. Since we want the second item, it will actually have index 1 because it goes 0, then 1. Now this piece of code doesn't do much on its own, so we might want to do something like print out the value that we get. So uh, instead we can do system dot out dot print line and then friends array and in uh, brackets the index that we want which is one all right so now we should get the element at index one which is the second element of our list which should be chris and it is so how do we do exactly the same thing with our friends array list well let's go ahead and copy this so instead of having the index in uh, brackets like that you actually do a method call so you say friends array list dot get and you pass in 
the index that you want. So of course here you want index one, just like we did above. So let's run our code again, and we should get Chris printed out twice, and we do. So to compare the two in this case, they're pretty similar. One isn't really easier or harder than the other, you just do them a little bit differently. So next, how do you get the size of each of these? Let's say we made an array, we wanna know how big it is. Well, to get the length of an array, uh, you do this. So we can just print it out again, system.out.println friends array dot length. Notice that's just a field. There's no uh, parentheses in that like there would be for a method call. And that's because it's just a field on that array. Let's go ahead and run that and see if it works. We should get a length of four and we do. Now, similarly for an array list, system.out.println friends array list dot not length, but size. And notice that it is a method call and not a field. So we have an open and close parentheses here because this size is a method call. Again, these two are very similar. One is a method call and one is a field. This returns how big the array is and this returns how big the array list is. So next, how do we add an element to the end of an array or the end of an array list? Well, here's how you do it with arrays. You can't do that with arrays. Now, why can't you do that? Well, it's what we talked about before. Arrays have a fixed size and can't grow or shrink. So our friends array will always be of size four because that's how many elements we put into it when we initialized it. So we just can't do that with our arrays. But that's where array lists come in to uh, kind of save the day. So we can do that easily with our array lists. And to do that, you just say friends array list dot add. You call the method add, and then you pass in the element that you want to add. Let's say I wanted to add uh, Mitch. It's that simple. So, and we can prove that that works by uh, copying this uh, get, and then we can instead get the element at index four, which should be the fifth and last element of our uh, array list. And that should give us Mitch, and it does. And that's another point on the side of array lists. And it's for the same reason as before. Arrays always have a fixed length and it can't grow. Array lists can grow dynamically like we're doing here. Actually, let's take a second to add some comments to what we're doing here. Add an element, get size, get element, create. Next, how do we set a particular element? Let's say we want to change the uh, element at index zero to be something else. So instead of John, I want to make it Carl. Well, it's pretty easy to do in either case. In the case of arrays, you just say friends array and pass in in brackets the index that you want to set and just set it just like you would any other variable. So friends array at zero equals Carl. And so now if I get the element at uh, index zero from my friends array, it should be Carl instead of John. And yep, there it is. So for array list, again, it's very similar, except uh, you do it with a method call instead of specifying your index in brackets. So you just say friends array list dot set, and then you pass in your index. So here I want to pass in the index zero for it to be the first element in the list. And then as the second argument, you pass in what you want to set the value to. So again, here I can say Carl. We can print that out as well. So if we want to do friends array list dot get the element at zero. And yes, we have properly changed the first element of the list to be Carl instead of John. Next, what if we want to remove an element from our array or our array list? Well, again, for arrays, sorry, you just can't do it. Can't do this with arrays. We have a fixed length in our array, so I can't just take out this second element and leave it with an array of size three because I can't change the size of my array. But with array lists, it is dead simple with just a method call. Friends, array list dot remove. And as you can see, you can specify one of two things when you call this method. You can either specify the index, so I could pass in zero and it'll remove that very first element at index zero from our list, or I can specify the object itself. So let's say I wanted to remove this uh, second element from my array list. I can either pass in the number one because the index of the second value is one, that'll remove it, or I can pass in the text Chris, I could pass in the exact element I want to remove. And since we've been messing with the indexes so much, let's uh, switch it up and do it this way. And we can prove that we have removed it because now when we get the element um, at index one, it should be Eric because Chris should be removed from the list. And yes, it did. The value at index one in our array list is now Eric. Got to say, that's another point for array list. The flexibility is just great. The last thing we want to compare is just printing. 
Let's say you wanted to print your array or print your array list. How do we do it? Well, let's try the first thing you would probably try. Just system.out.println.friends friends array. And similarly, we'll do system.out.println.friends friends array list. Let's just print both of those out and compare uh, what they look like. So you can see the last two lines we printed out here. Uh, this is printing out our array and this is printing out our array list. So you just looking at those, you'll probably get a good idea of what I personally like better. What happens when you print out an array is Java just basically gives you the memory address of that array. Maybe that's what you want, but probably not. You probably want to print out all the elements in the array, right? That's what would make sense. And that's exactly what the array list implementation does. And that's because the array list has implemented the two string method and it has made it uh, print out in this nice fancy way where it does a, you know, an open bracket, it prints out the first element, and then a comma and a space, and the second element, and so on. And see, this is just so clean. You can print out your list super easily and know exactly what is in it. And that's something you just don't get easily with arrays. If you want to print out all the elements in an array, you pretty much have to do a for loop and iterate over all elements in that array and print it out. But with an array list, it is already done for you. So if after going through all of this, you say, man, array lists really rock, I should use those. I think you are absolutely right. What array list really is, is a wrapper around Java's arrays that make them so much easier to work with. It gives you automatic resizing, easy adding, easy removing, and easy printing. And that's not even to mention all the other things that you get because an array list is part of Java's uh, collection. So and you can you see just a glimpse of that by saying, okay, I'm gonna take my friend's array list, what methods can I call on it? Oh man, I can see if it contains an object. I can call for each on it and loop through every element in it. I can call a method to see if it's empty. I can see what the last index is. I can easily sort the list. I can create a stream from it and do all kinds of cool things from that. It really is awesome how much the ArrayList class gives you to use. So it'll probably come as no shock to you that ArrayList is the one that I use and recommend that you use the vast majority of the time. It just makes life so much easier and it makes your code so much easier to work with using ArrayList over regular arrays. Using an ArrayList does add a little bit of overhead, you know, when you're adding and removing values and stuff. Java has to do some work behind the scenes to make that happen. But the vast majority of the time for most use cases I've ever worked with, the difference in speed was just so negligible and it flat out didn't matter. And the array list just being so much easier to work with as a programmer just far and away outweighs the little bit of performance uh, increase you'll get from just using arrays. So I just don't think it's worth it to use arrays unless you absolutely have to. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, please let me know with a like. And if you'd like to see more videos like this every single week where we go over a new uh, Java lesson or tutorial or complete coding walkthrough, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video every week. Again, a special thanks to you for liking and subscribing. It's the only way these videos get out to more people, so I really do appreciate it. Mm, I wonder if Chris will be offended that I chose to use his name as the example of a friend to remove from my list. Sorry, Chris.